Okay, so two things we need to describe about the wind is the direction it's blowing and um, how fast it's blowing. So this last section kind of looks at that. Now, not always, but usually, I should say, that when we say, when we describe the direction the wind is blowing, it's usually we're describing the direction the wind is coming from. We're describing the direction that the wind is coming from. So we say that, for instance, we have um, generally a westerly wind. So that means it's coming from the west. Now, this is not to say that sometimes I, I would say that, man, that's a strong wind blowing to the east, you know. But I kind of have to qualify that if I'm talking about the direction it's blowing to. Um, so a few ways to describe the direction that the wind is blowing. One of them is basically you take, um, you talk in terms of degrees. Now the way this works is due north is zero degrees and then um, due east is 90 degrees and that leaves south for 180 degrees. Where did it go? There it is. And then, of course, west is 270 degrees. That's one way to do it. But probably what you're more familiar with is this kind of common way of um, talking about wind direction. For instance, um, if a wind is coming halfway between the north and the east, we would call that a northeast wind. And then actually, I think this is kind of fun. If it's coming closer to the north than the east, between the north and east, it's a north north easterly wind, that sort of thing. Okay. So again, I just emphasize in general, unless they say otherwise, if somebody gives you wind direction, that is the wind the direction is blowing from. Okay. So these are kind of neat. Uh, we're going to talk more about uh, when we talk about global winds. We'll see that. Actually, given a location and kind of a general time of year, we generally kind of know the direction that the wind's going to blow for our location uh, in general for a particular time of year. So we can come up with these sort of gizmos. It's called a wind rose. And where it shows you um, for this location, this particular time of year, the length of the of the line is kind of showing you the tendency, for instance, winds are most likely out of the uh, northwest. Aside from that, it looks like coming in second is the southwest. Maybe third looks like it might be a tie between the northeast and the west. So the length of the, of the line indicates kind of how much wind blows from that direction. I think that's kind of neat. If you're in Australia, your prevailing wind um, would be uh, for, uh, again, this t a t particular time of year, in the winter time anyway, you're under the influence of the southeasterly trade winds. We'll talk more about that. But boy, that's a really prevailing wind, isn't it? Uh, so here are some gizmos on understanding or uh, directly or I guess pretty much directly seeing which direction the wind is blowing. We can use a weather vane. We can use a windsock. We can use an arrow vane. Okay, so these are all ways of, of um, identifying wind direction. How about wind speed? Well, that arrow vane you saw just a minute ago, actually, um, the propeller part on it, I could bring it back in, but you saw the thing with the propeller spinning. Not, so not only does it give us direction, but also how fast that propeller is moving gives us wind speed. The wind sock, you can't really put a number on it, but you can see if it's very inflated. If it's a, very much inflated, that means the wind is blowing fast. If it's like all limp, that means that there is basically no wind. I've heard that, and I'm not a pilot, but that um, that pilots can actually use these wind socks, you know, just at a glance to kind of know the surface conditions that they're flying from or into. Um, so. Let's see, this is kind of highlighting something called a cup anemometer. Right here, this thing rotates, and as it rotates, um, how its basically rotational speed is measured. This is part of an ASOS. We talked about those kind of automated uh, stations that that uh, kind of located near airports or associated with airports that give information. 
So that can give us, that cup anemometer can give us wind speed. So another way that we can gather information about wind speed would be more, well, I say indirect. And we, from satellite imagery, we can actually look at clouds moving over time. So no clouds, this, this method won't work. 